one skill I really appreciate, uh, and I'm, I won't say I'm envious of, but I'd really like to have it, is going to an alien territory. Uh, and this is something you did in Following Fish. And, and striking up conversations with people and, and making sure they're vulnerable enough to share interesting insights. How did you have a strategy to do it? Or, you know, you've grown up in such a, uh, you, you've had such a childhood or you've had such a life where it comes very naturally to you to uh, show people open up uh, to you in alien territories. It's a really good question. Actually, yeah. I haven't thought about this. Yeah. Um, I mean, maybe part of it is down to one's personality. Like if you're curious about things, if you're genuinely curious, maybe it shows and it inspires mm. you to yeah. strike up conversations. One may be just that this is just what the journalist does. You'd never mm. be a good journalist if you don't go out. And this is yeah. like the one thing you have, to do, you know, <laughs> like, you know, the whole, like you had one job thing. Yeah. This is your one job. If you yeah. don't get people to talk to you, you, you should find another way to make a living. Mm. So that may be it also. Um, but it's, it's, and, and very often the, some of these are quite, they're more contrived than it appears in the book, you know? So for example, yeah. when I, I'm meeting somebody in, I don't know, in Bombay, hmm. uh, and I'm talking to them about you know, the Poli community and its history and, you know, yeah. um, it may look, and obviously it is in my best interest to make it seem as if it's just like happened like that. But the truth is that there is some kind of homework and legwork that goes into it. So I've made calls before and I've had somebody maybe introduce me to so-and-so, some, you know, like a mutual contact. Right. And that mutual contact is maybe suggested to this person saying, look, talk to this guy and he's interested mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. um, so some of that is obviously not on the page and following fish, but it's definitely there. Um, but, you know, by and large, and this is definitely true of uh, what we may for the purposes of this podcast call regular people, by which I mean people who are not celebrities, not politicians, sportsmen, actors, that kind of, you know, not public figures. But for regular people, if you really sort of sincerely ask them questions about what they do, uh, the, the beautiful thing about human society is that they respond. You know, uh, they are eager to talk to you if you are genuinely interested and they will tell you things. If you open yourself up to them, they will open themselves up to you. And it's really, it's a it's something about the nature of human relationships that never ceases to amaze me. And I've, you know, India is diverse enough. You know, I'm from Chennai and I've lived in Delhi and I've lived in Bombay, but I've never been to, uh, I, you know, I've never sort of even, I've never lived in Calcutta, for example, and I've never lived in uh, coastal Gujarat. And yet in all of these places, these are diverse enough places, but this is true the world over. I've reported in Indonesia and Nigeria, and Hong Kong and you know, Singapore and all all these places where I did have the first connection with the people I was talking to in terms of a cultural link. And yet, if you sit down with them and you spend time with them and you ask them questions from a genuine place of curiosity, um, people want to talk about themselves. And it's a, uh, it's truly astonishing and sometimes moves me quite a bit. That's fascinating. Now, and I, as I think about it, that's why podcasts also work in a way. Like I, we reach out to people and ask them to tell us things which probably they have written about, but sometimes they even haven't thought about it. Uh, and yeah, my biggest apprehension before starting this podcast is why would anyone like to talk to me? Like, why would anyone want to answer my questions? But the, uh, the I have been wrong. People like to talk and share their experiences, their life, uh, because, I mean, as you said, uh, every India is a diverse country, but people in themselves are so diverse. Uh, they yeah. want to, everybody wants their life to be a story in some way. So uh, that's why people talk and uh, I think it's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, there's, I mean, there's a lot of, I mean, like, there's like, you know, let me tell you, for example, one journalistic trick of the trade that I, oh. I employ all the time. Let me um, get a pen. No, no, it's only one. And it's like easy to remember, I promise. Yeah. But like, you know, people are afraid of boring you. The people you interview are often afraid of boring you. And so they think that you're actually looking for much less deta detail than you're actually looking for. I, as a journalist, am looking for as much detail as possible. Hmm. And 
the person I'm interviewing at the beginning of the conversation would always think the reverse. They'll think that I only want the broad outlines. I only want the big ideas. Right. They will they will not want to bore me. They're very yeah. people are considerate of your time. Yeah. So your job as an interviewer or a journalist is to convince them that they can never bore you and that you want much more out of them. And so the way to do this is, is to start asking about tiny details. Like, you know, somebody will ask, you know, I, I, let's assume for following fish, let's assume I asked somebody about the first boat he went out fishing on. Now, uh, when he first went out fishing, let's say, when did you first start fishing? And so the guy will, and this is something I, that actually happened during the quoting of following fish. It's not in the book, but like very often people will say, I used to go out with my father when he was, you know, when I was five years old, that was the first time. And then when I was 18, I started going out by myself. That's not, he skipped over 13 years of his life. And so yeah. I, it's my job to then pull him back to the five years. So tell me, when would you go out? What time? What did the boat look like? How many people? Would go? Just like tiny details. And the minute the conversation starts in that vein, the person will realize automatically or, you know, some, maybe even consciously, they will realize that you are interested in more granular things, like in small stories. And then they will start to say, the boat was like this, and it had belonged to my uncle. And, you know, we almost lost it during a storm, the storm that hit when I was seven years old, but then we had to kind of like salvage it and repair it. And repairing a fishing boat is such a huge process. Now, the minute he says that, then I have a story. What do you mean? Why is it so hard to repair a fishing boat? And then he'll start talking about the actual like nitty gritty of his, his life and his trade. So uh, this is always how conversation, I mean, well, most of the time, this is how, sometimes you run into the odd uh, aberration who just like talks nonstop and is detailed from the get go. And so, you know, is an interviewer's delight. But by and large, this is how interviewing operates. And so you always have to convince them saying, look, you can never bore me, tell me. Fascinating. We will clip this and put it on Instagram uh, as a reel for people, for for journalists and for uh, other kinds of interviewers like podcasters. Mm-hmm. Uh, weirdly, I, I don't know why I don't consider podcasts as interviews. I just consider them as chats. Uh, but I, I don't yeah. know. Uh, the, the, the best interviews are chats. Yeah. The best conversations, the best interviews I've had interviews yeah. quote unquote yeah. are the ones in which eventually the person i'm interviewing starts to ask me questions and then it turns into a conversation right and then you really have something then it starts to like burn and like shine and it's great fantastic 